Hi everyone. Welcome to this physics models course by Kastaban. That's me. Please do subscribe to my channel and share with your friends. And if you have time, please also log in to my website physicsmodels.in which has a lot more content and login is free. So let's uh, begin. The SI unit of current is ampere and the symbol is A. Probably everybody knows that. But in this video, I'm going to focus on making the definition of ampere easy. The old definition that existed before 2019 and the new definition that came into existence after 2019. In the old one, the SI committee defined ampere as a very constant current flowing through two parallel wires. The wires were placed exactly one meter apart. They were to be infinitely long. They had to be of negligible cross section and the force between the two wires, attraction or repulsion, had to be 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 newtons per meter of length of the wires and the whole thing had to be kept in vacuum. The next step is to understand force between the two parallel wires. Force as a SI unit existed at that time. Force was mass into acceleration. There was a SI unit for mass. Acceleration was defined as velocity per unit time. Velocity was distance per unit time. So distance and time both had been well defined. So there was no problem of SI unit. Coming to the principle of force between the wires. Let's talk about a single wire first. Whenever a current is passed through a wire, a magnetic field is created around the wire. If you look at this visual, you can see that a battery is connected to a wire. The wire is shown in red color. The positive is connected to one end of the wire. The negative is connected to the other end of the wire through those vertical poles. And the right hand thumb rule has been applied. So you can see that the direction in which the thumb is pointing is the direction of the current flow, which is into the plane of the paper from positive to negative. And the hand has been curled around the red wire which shows the direction of the magnetic field. You can see those concentric rings, which are the magnetic fields, and the green arrows show the vector direction at each point of the magnetic field. So far, we saw the case of one wire. In the definition of ampere, there are two wires. Both wires are running parallel to each other. Therefore, there are two magnetic fields that are happening there. Magnetic field for wire one, and magnetic field for wire 2. So obviously these two magnetic fields will intersect each other and interact with each other in the space between the wire 1 and wire 2. If you go into detail the direction of the magnetic field the vector will point in a direction depending upon the direction of flow of the current. In this beautiful sketch, imagine you are looking from this end and the current is flowing into the plane of paper in both the wires, wire 1 and wire 2 on the right hand side. The magnetic field of the wire 1 is shown by the green arrows and you can see in the center between the wires, the green arrow is pointing downwards because of the clockwise motion. The same clockwise motion when we apply to the second wire on the right hand side, the pink arrows are pointing upwards in the central region. You can see the one uh, next to the green arrow. Therefore, there is a force of repulsion between the wires. The magnetic fields are repelling each other. That's how the force comes into play. The next complicated question is, what do we do with this force? It could be repulsion or attraction. That's not a problem. That will happen depending upon whether you pass the current into the plane of paper or the current is coming out of the plane of paper. But looking at the magnitude of the force, the SI definition said that that should be managed to be exactly equal to 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 newtons per meter length of wire. So if it's 2 meters, you have to multiply by 2. If it's 3 meters long, then you multiply by 3. 
and they said that once you get that force between the two wires it means that you are passing exactly one ampere through the wires a very indirect way of measuring current this force to current relationship is because force depends on the strength of the magnetic field the strength of the magnetic field depends upon how much current is flowing in the wires so therefore this was accurate to the extent of 3 parts per 10 million this old definition of ampere had some problems as i have uh, listed here first problem was how do we fabricate an apparatus with an infinitely long wire 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, it can take a whole building and beyond. The second was, even if we fix those long wires, we had to keep both of them exactly parallel all along the length. You can imagine if it's a 50 meters long wire, keeping both of them exactly parallel throughout their length is, is a huge physical problem. The third challenge was, to construct a vacuum chamber that can maintain a total vacuum over the entire length of this kind of wire. That's also a very, very big uh, challenge. So with all these practical limitations, scientists could get, uh, well, they could get one ampere, but with a limited amount of accuracy. It was very clear that a new definition was uh, badly needed. We now come to the new definition of the ampere. Before getting into the details, I would like you to visit this site. This is the official site of the International Bureau of Weights and Measures and uh, that's called BIPM in French uh, and I have written what it stands for in English. Coming to the new definition from the year 2019, the SI committee of scientists got rid of the parallel wires, the force measurement, the vacuum and all that. And they redefined ampere in terms of fundamental quantities which cannot change ever and which will be constant wherever they are measured on planet earth. One of these fundamental quantities is the charge of the electron 1.6021 etc into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs which is unchangeable and the second fundamental quantity was one second and one second in my earlier video also I've explained that that's the frequency uh, emitted by the cesium-133 atom in the atomic clock. With this they said that the charge of the electron which flows per second is the ampere. So one ampere is one coulomb flow per second through a wire. Let's look at this uh, beautiful visual to get a picture of the electron's flow. So to have one coulomb flowing through this wire, the electrons will come out from the negative terminal of the battery that's shown in this picture, come all the way around and flow to the positive terminal of the battery. Just to remember that the current flow will be opposite to the direction of the electron's flow both are shown in arrows, the electron flow is shown in pink, the current flow is shown in orange. Now coming to the SI definition, we need a lot of electrons to flow to create one coulomb flowing per second through this wire or conductor. The question is, how many electrons? So that's uh, calculated here. So the charge of one electron is 1.6021 is to try to 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. So one coulomb flow will happen when 1 by 1.6021 into 10 to the power minus 19 number of charges flow through a wire. And that's a huge number of electrons. When these many electrons flow per second, at any given point of the wire, we'll get one ampere flow of current. Therefore, the ampere is now defined theoretically. This slide describes once again 
the logic of the SI committee to redefine ampere in terms of fundamental quantities which can always be verified, which can be repeated and which will not change from point to point or from scientist to scientist. One of them, as I said before, is the charge of an elementary electron which is 1.6021 to the power minus 19 coulomb. The other fundamental quantity is one second, which is also very accurately defined. So now the definition of ampere was cast in stone. Now, even with this new definition, scientists pointed out some practical problems. For example, they said, how do we count the number of electrons flowing in a wire? The electrons are so tiny and millions and billions of them have to flow to create that one coulomb flowing per second. Therefore, the physical measurement is still a huge challenge and it's not fully sorted. The definition is beautifully sorted, but not the measurement. So in conclusion, we can say that there is a scope for scientific inquiry and invention here, and maybe one of you will achieve that uh, goal. I hope you found this course useful. I do hope you find that beautiful bridge to cross the river of physics. I wish you all the best and have a great day.